everyone, my name is Lone Star Islips, and welcome back to Broken Sword 5, The Serpent's Curse. Now, last time uh, we left off, George and Nico had managed to get into Madovsky's uh, Chelsea home in London. A uh, very, very spiffing place, actually. Uh, the man is clearly as crooked as a hillbilly smile. He really, really is. Um, yeah, so George managed to get into uh, Madovsky's office. He got into the, the secret compartment in, in, in the in the uh, in the desk that Madovsky has and he, he came up with the name Hobbs uh, the, the art restorer for uh, for the La Medicio um, so without further ado we managed to get we managed to get to uh, Hobbs's uh, place of residence but that's where we left it off so without further ado we're gonna get stuck back in and uh, see what Hobbs has to say for himself. So this is Hobbs' place here. Uh, clearly, the the window of that van needs severe help. The van's window looked like it hadn't been washed for years. It's also smashed, George. The door was locked. Looking through the window, I could see that there was nothing in the van. Hobbs must have taken the portfolio inside. Hmm. Here we go. That's a Georgie gets stuck back in there, son. Uh, let's see. The handbrake looked ineffective, like all the other safety features. I decided to leave the handbrake alone. I don't think it would have mattered, George, to be honest. Whiskey. Slosh out. Whiskey. Very strong stuff. Oh dear. Anything else? Is that it? It was the lever to open the hood. I popped open the van's hood. It was the horn. Not a sound. The horn wasn't working. Really? Okay. The large dumpster was full of garbage. Rubbish, George. It's called rubbish. Ah, uh, hit the bloody phone room. Right. So, it was Hobbs's mailbox. There was a note hanging out. For a second, I debated the morality of mail snooping. It was a short debate, and I won. Good on you, George. I decided to open the letter. Yeah, good on you, George. What is Dear it? Dear Mr. Hobbs, due to previous incidents, we are writing to inform you that we will no longer be sending models to your address. It went on to discuss Hobbs' temper and other alleged infractions, some of which still carry the death sentence in certain less sophisticated cultures. Interesting. Jesus. This could come in useful. Awesome, George. It was a thick metal security door. Hobbs clearly took his security seriously. Oh, Nico's joining them. I don't think there's anyone home. There's a light on upstairs. Huh. The drain pipe was more rust than iron. Climbing drain pipes was something I preferred to avoid. Unless I had a great reason to do so. So why is that up there? There's like a little um, seagull there. Why that must be Oh wait hold on the bonnet I forgot about the bloody bonnet
The engine was held together by rust and dirt. Everything was covered in a sticky film of dirty black oil. Half the wiring wasn't connected to anything. It was clear why the horn hadn't made a noise. Neither horn pipe was connected to either the battery or the cab. A bundle of wires came into the engine bay from the dashboard. Many of the wires seemed to lead nowhere. That was never going to work. Seven. Nope, I needed to try something else. That was never going to work. It was the van battery. I needed to hook this up to the horn somehow. It was the van's engine. I didn't really have any reason to sabotage it. I think I'm, miss I'm missing something here. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected to anything else under the hood. Two wires hung loose from it. A loose wire hung from the horn. If I had some spare cable, I could connect it to the other horn. Right. It was one of two horns in the van. It didn't seem to be connected. Right, okay. A loose wire hung from the right-hand horn. I needed a better idea. Shit. That would be pointless. Okay. A bundle of short severed wires was connected to the battery. None of the wires were connected to anything. Right. That was never going to work. Oh, come on. That's not fair. It was the van's engine. A bundle of wires came into the engine bay from the dashboard. That would be pointless. Right. I don't have anything handy. <sighs> Piles of junk, mostly boxes of old paints and scraps of picture frames. Mixed in were wires, cardboard, and some dubious looking old clothes. Pick up the wires, George. Oh, kicking off. Now George's phone's ringing, not mine. George Stobart. Of course, Inspector. Oh, okay. I see. Hey, sure. And you. So that's Inspector Nave up George's arse there? That was Nave. We're required back at the gallery tomorrow for a crime scene reconstruction. Let me guess. Non-attendance is a criminal offense? You got it. Right, junk. Pick up the junk. I had found just what I needed. Two lengths of wire. Yes. That is how it's done, George. Get back into the bonnet. The 
engine bay was a mess. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. That has to be it now, isn't it? That has to be it now. The horn wasn't working. Oh, uh, what? Are you kidding? I oh, need the keys to start the engine. I had no reason nor any desire to steal Hobbs's van. I used the wire to join the battery to the horn. That has to be it now. Come on. Second time around. <coughs> the horn wasn't working. Oh, are you kidding me? I wouldn't have been able to break the chain, or the padlock. Oh, this bloody game sometimes. was the van battery. I snipped the wire in half. <coughs> I'd already cut one wire in half. I'd already cut one wire in half. Okay. The wire was just long enough to connect the battery to the horn. I connected the wires from the cab to the horn. Everything was wired up. The horn had power. Right. Good stuff. Finally. Good God. Oh. The van's hood was already open. No, not okay. Right, let's go for it. I figured that should get Hobbs' attention. All right, hold your blooming horses. What are you up to with my van? Hello there. Uh, we fixed your horn. So I hear. Now, what are you doing in my yard? Hello there. We'd like to discuss some restoration work with you. Then make an appointment. I'm busy. No. Well, that could have gone better. He's not exactly the friendliest of characters. I did not go through making a warn for somebody. That sounds very wrong. Not I decided to give it another blast. Yeah, I go for it, George. Hold it in. For crying out loud, will you leave my van alone? Sorry, uh, just need a quick word, Mr. Hobbs. Sorry to bother you again, Mr. Hobbs, but... This Hobbs guy doesn't exactly like visitors. There must be some angle we can use to talk our way inside. Oh, the ladder! The ladder! Sorry, Nico, you're going to have to be used as a piece of meat. Sorry. I decided to give it another blast. 
catching on quick. You two again? What is it this time? Afternoon, Mr. Hobbs. We're from the model agency. About blooming time. I'm on a deadline. You better come up. Yes. Yes. That's using your initiative. <laughs> About time you two showed up. Hello, Mr. Hobbs. I was just wondering if... Uh, 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 can it, Goldilocks? I don't have time for chit-chat. Just get undressed behind that screen. Undressed? That was the deal. An extra 20 quid, because I need you with your kit up. The studio was freezing. And as for you, darling, no need to get undressed. I've got a vivid imagination, so I'll just use that. Either way, just go sit over there on that rug and give me your best belly pock floozy. That's perfect. Just hold it there. Nico made for a good distraction. I just needed to figure out how to get a look inside that portfolio. A variety of liquor bottles, all empty. How about a top up, Mr. Hobbs? Thanks, but I've already got a glass full. It was a full glass of whiskey. How about a top up, Mr. Hobbs? Thanks, but I've already. Oh, okay, fair enough. My, my, <laughs> if it isn't George Stobart. Lady <gasps> Piermont. Oh! Oh, my. You're naked? <laughs> of course. As an artist's muse, one often finds oneself en pelotas. Now, George, don't be shy. Come here and give me a big hug. Oh, God, George. That day was the day the nightmares had begun. <laughs> smothered. Choking on lavender. Uh, George, darling, pass me my robe. It's terribly cold in here. That was the day the nightmares become. Oh, oh brilliant. What are you doing with a blooming robe on? God help me, but you're supposed to be naked. I've got a deadline to meet. Well, you won't be meeting any deadlines with manners like that. And besides, it's freezing in here. Lady Piermont and I had met before. She was larger than life, in every way. Oh, Lady Piermont, one of my favorite characters from Broken Sword 1. Hello, George! What can I do for you now? Lady Piermont, Lady Piermont first appeared in Broken Sword Shadow of the Templars. She claims an impeccable lineage and that my blood may be blue, but the flesh is the plump beef of old England. And she's not afraid to flaunt it. One thing is certain, she can always be relied upon in a, in a tight spot. Right. His glass is empty. Fill him up. Get him absolutely poleaxed. How about another whiskey? Hmm, don't mind if I do. Lady Piermont. Oh, George, be a darling and sort the heating out in here. I'll see what I can do. Stereo. Is that a bit of stereo? Wow, an old Boffson Wang stereo. I hadn't seen one of those for years. I 
turned the volume up a few notches. I turned the volume down again. I turned the volume up a few notches. A record was spinning on the turntable. It was locked. I wondered what was behind the door. Left buttons, left buttons. Hey, stop meddling with that. The power's ropey enough as it is. Blowing the power would certainly have distracted Hobbs, but the elevator alone wasn't going to trip the whole system. Okay, so what's this? Uh, thermostat, thermostat, thermostat. Didn't even notice that the first time. Hey! Leave that dial alone. Sorry, but Lady Piermont is cold. I thought... Look, pal, I know it's brass monkeys in here, but the wiring in this building is ancient, and the fuse box won't take it. Her Majesty will just have to get used to chapel hat pegs. Oh, Jesus. Lady Piermont, Mr. Hobbs won't let me turn up the heating. Well, we'll soon see about that. Oh, crumbs. If you do not adjust the heating, I shall refuse to cooperate. Lady Piermont, it's the circuits. They won't take the strain. You know what old buildings are like. In which case, I see no reason for this session to continue. Whoa, Lady Piermont, let's not be too hasty. I'm sure I can accommodate your needs. Good. Perhaps you can start by letting George here turn up the heating. Oh, oh go ahead then, but be careful. The power in here is uh, temperamental. I'd turned the thermostat up as far as it would go. I wondered if the suspicious wiring could be used to my advantage. Oh, he's starting to go. He is starting to go. Get another whiskey. How about another whiskey? Fast smashing. Far away. It was the same folder that Madovsky had taken from his cupboard. It was the only lead to the painting we had. I needed to look inside. Although Hobbs was drunk, he wasn't blind. I needed to distract him. Here we go, get on the stool, George, get on the stool. I didn't need to sit, it was time for action. Yeah, you tell him, George. I wasn't going to mess around with that wiring. A well-worn stool sat in the corner. Stand on it, George, come on. I didn't need to sit. It... Oh, come on, George, you're annoying me. It was a solid warehouse door. I had no need to walk out onto the balcony. Skipped on the lady pyramid though. A word if I may, Lady Piermont. For you, George! I'm all ears. How can I help?
Lady Piermont, we need your help. How thrilling! What do you need? Subterfuge? Leisure domain? Um, actually, I just need you to step on that lift behind you. Oh, but of course. Is this good, George, darling? Perfect. Now, just stay right there. Oh, I've got it. I've got it. George Stobart, genius at work. I would like to take some credit as well. Go on, go on, George. It's a race against time. Now was my chance. God bloody talking, George! Get the fucking thing! Hurry up! Hobbs was good, but no way was he going to sketch me in the nude. More of Hobbs' sketches. The model looked familiar. Impressionist sketches. Well, it wasn't La Maledicio, but it did appear to be a study for an element of the painting, the Ouroboros. There was something different about the image in the center. Pick it up, George. Pick it up. I figured the sketch might come in handy, so I took it. Is that it? What the heck? I told you that portfolio was private. Huh? Well, that was fun. Just like when you were a private dick, George. So, you're not models? No, Mr. Hobbs. Well, you can't be a copper. You're not stupid enough. So what the blazes are you doing in my studio? We're investigating the theft of a painting, La Melodexio, by the Spanish artist El Serp. One of these sketches is a study of that painting. Well, sure, but what's that got to do with that? I'm a restorer, and I restored it. I've got now to do with what happened after that painting left this studio. How was I to know it was going to get Henri killed? How do you know that? Hang on a second. How do you know Henri's dead? Look, he and I went back a long way. Le Lézard Bleu was on the rope, so I got the painting into his exhibition. Nothing like this was supposed to happen. I don't go hard with him. But something did happen, Hobbs. Your friend lost his life. I'll help you however I can, but this mess is way above my pay grade. Lady Paramount what do you stuck, want to know? stuck halfway up there. How come you needed to make so many sketches of the painting to restore it? Restoration is not about throwing a lot of paint around. It, it takes research. The Serp is a complicated painting. A lot of subtext, a lot of symbols. Tell me about the symbols in La Maledizio. Very Christian, deeply religious, but not exactly orthodox. The sort of thing that would upset a priest? There was one at the gallery telling everyone how evil it was. As I said, it's not exactly orthodox, and the church can be very touchy about orthodoxy. Especially now they can't just burn anyone they disagree with. Yeah, that's true. Why would anyone want to steal La Maledizio? It's not exactly a famous painting. True. Well, there is something special about it that's hard to describe. There's conviction in every brushstroke. Whoever El Serp was, he had a tale to tell. The symbolism is deeply religious. We have reason to believe that Madovsky is mixed up in the theft of La Maledexio. Eh? <laughs> what would he gain from stealing his own painting? We have strong evidence that Madovsky is not the real owner. He'll have a hard time proving that. Medovsky has a full set of provenances for the painting. It traces its legitimate ownership all the way back to the painter. Well, why didn't Medovsky mention them? Because they're not with him. Henri's got them. Or had them. And Henri is dead. 
Uh, so what's going on? Lane? Lane, yeah, Lane. Look, pal, you're wasting your time looking for conspiracies here. And you're wasting my time if you're not actually going to get naked. Go get the provenance from Lane, and everything will turn out hunky-dory. But it also puts Marquez's story into question. Not my problem, darling. Now both of you, get lost. I've got a painting to finish. And we have a critic to interrogate. Just come back to Lane again. Someone's well, hey. lying, but who? Is it the gangster or the old Spaniard? The painter or the art critic? I need to head back for Nave's reconstruction. What about the evidence from Medovsky's house? Will you give it to Nave? I think I should. And I can put the squeeze on Lane. Ask him about the provenance. Good. I've got lunch with Ronnie tomorrow. This story is hurting up, and I want to make sure he keeps me on it. Taxi? Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, okay, guys, I'm actually going to leave it there. I think it's about half an hour or so. Um, I'm not going to go any further. Uh, this has been cracking to, to play so far. I hope everybody uh, is enjoying it. Um, I'm going to say bye-bye for now. My name has been Lone Star Slips. Until next time, guys, take care, all the best, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.